All right, so at this point, the likelihood that what you have looks exactly like what I have is pretty low and that you will be addressing the exact issues uh, that I am addressing is also very, very low. So at this point, I'm, I'm just gonna continue sculpting and talking through the process. Uh, but you know, because yours is different, the, the specific things I'm doing here are not really gonna be relevant, most likely. So anyway, um, you know, take, take the, 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 the rest of this tutorial series as a uh, uh, more of like a general approach to problem solving rather than like specific instructions on how to sculpt your hand and to fix uh, actual specific issues that may arise uh, with your individual model. So I'm looking at this top view here and I see some, some, uh, some stuff that's off. I'm going to turn perspective off here just to kind of get a better idea. Obviously like the, the, the width at the end of the fingers here, especially the thumb may look a little bit wider than it should just because there's no, uh, perspective, uh, distortion here, but I can kind of get a better sense for the arrangement of the fingers. And you can see here, hopefully, that the angle here versus what I have isn't quite right. These need to be rotated this way a little bit. And this pinky here still feels like it's sticking out a little bit too far. Like we should be getting, let me just go ahead and uh, drop the lower subs. Mask the middle fingers, invert the mask, blur it. So I need to tap the Y key to, uh, oh, uh, here's another thing, is if you have symmetry turned on and you try to do something with a rotation where you expect it to be rotating around uh, the, the pivot that you've created, you need to turn on local symmetry. And what that'll do is it will respect where you actually want to be rotating from. So that's why it is up here. Normally I think it's in the transform menu somewhere. Yeah, right there. So I'm going to back up a little bit because I think I might have scaled it a little tiny bit on accident. All right. So again, we're looking over here. You can kind of look at the, th that distance there and the fact that like the, uh, uh, from the, like a horizontal line here between the index finger and the middle finger, that's like pretty close to horizontal. So make sure rotate is active. And then I'm going to just kind of lower this stuff a little bit just so that these two fingers match what's going on here a little bit better. And then tap the Q button, invert the mask. And I'm going to just kind of scoot this in a little bit using the move just to try to get a little bit of a tighter gap there. That's probably something I'm going to need to do uh, with the, the sculpting brushes. And then with the pinky, same deal here, just gonna bring it in so we get a little bit closer to what that line is there. So I'm also gonna make a little bit of an adjustment here to the thumb. That same thing in line uh, in mind, it, it, uh, it looks like this, I've got the angle going too far back here. And this width here feels like it's it's still a little bit too intense. So for this, if you see me invert the mask and smooth it and then invert it again and smooth it, that's just a way of getting it to be a little bit, uh, a little bit smoother in general. Like it's, you get a little bit of a better result than just tapping smooth a couple times with the same selection in my experience. So I'm gonna hold shift and and it's okay if we get a little bit of a, of a hiccup there, we're gonna have to clean it up in the sculpt anyway. And then I also see this line as being further slanted than what I've got here. So, and if you look at the, the geometry, because I just did that thing, it's enough also like there's gonna be an issue like there, whatever. Again, we're just gonna have to get in here and sculpt it a little bit. But, uh, we can get the silhouette looking a little bit better. All right. So I'm gonna turn perspective back on, turn the poly frame off by hitting shift F. And 
I can see that I probably need to come in here and we'll hop back up to the highest subdivision level. So like, this is why it's not a good idea to get too crazy with the detail. Let me reduce my intensity. I, I uh, had a restart between this video and the last. Too crazy with the detail on the knuckles in the top of the hand because here I am, I just have to pay right over the top of it. And uh, one of the mistakes I made when I was just learning ZBrush uh, initially is I would randomly kind of get something right, or at least I felt like I would get something right, and then I would be uh, hesitant to go back in and make necessary adjustments even though they were certainly required because I didn't want to screw up the good sculpting that I thought I had done. And the sculpting was never really that good to begin with. It was just like I just thought it looked good. So clearly if I needed to fix it, it wasn't right. So I just encourage you to be uh, cautious of digging into too much detail at any at any early phase in the sculpt because you will most likely have to come in and nuke it at some point. So I'm just kind of filling out that area of the palm there, the back of the palm, adding a little bit more volume to it. Still saying uh, nice and rough. And if I turn the uh, the uh, poly frame on, I guess it doesn't look like there's too much too much packing in those uh, those loops there. But it wouldn't surprise me if uh, you know if that when you do those kind of those uh, masking and moving operations, you can end up with some some somewhat odd geometry. And if you ever find that the geometry is fighting you, all you got to do it's very simple. You just go back in and Z remesh. You know that whole process that we did a little bit earlier and that way you get exactly the geometry that you need for what it is that you're, you're trying to sculpt. That flexibility is one of the things that makes working with ZBrush so powerful. So just doing something kind of similar here with what we did on the fingers which is just kind of try to find these lines in the sculpt. Based on the silhouette and then just sprinkling in the smallest amount of generic hand knowledge where necessary. Everybody, hopefully, if you're doing this tutorial anyway, you probably have at least one hand and you can just glance down and see kind of how things are arranged. So I'm using Dam Standard. This is a new brush for this tutorial. It's nothing fancy, but it can be good for doing these kind of marks. Those marks in and of themselves, that, you know, 33 is, is a, that's a pretty intense mark there. So as with many brushes, something a little bit closer to uh, you know, 15, 17, something like that uh, is, is always uh, a safer bet. And I have lazy mouse turned on. I guess the brush has it turned on by default. You can increase the lazy radius, which will give you a little bit of a stroke averaging thing, which could be useful in many scenarios, not necessarily in this one. So I'm using clay, uh, uh, the clay tubes now, just to kind of get in there and moderate that transition because it gives you kind of a sort of a, a, a soft valley like the the upper part of the valley is soft and the the uh, inner valley itself is pretty pretty sharp so you can end up with with some uh, kind of bulgy stuff on either side of the mark that is not necessarily what you're looking for but it is still really useful for like creating a distinct change in the uh, in the shape of the hand, which is a little bit tricky to, uh, to see here, but again, you know, just glance down at your own hand, and you should see something somewhat similar. So I'm going to use the flatten 404 to uh, come in and and clean up some of this rough stuff, but we're gonna we're gonna pick that up in the next video.